behalf of Flavors for Life, my name is Jeff Piccioni and I'm the Director of Food and Beverage at Canyon Ranch Spa and Fitness at the Venetian Resort. Today I'm going to walk you through a roasted cauliflower coconut milk soup, something that's going to highlight a few ingredients that maybe people don't always like to enjoy, but I'm going to give you a few cooking tips that's going to make these a little bit more flavorful, a little bit more enjoyable, um, and they're going to do a lot of good things for your body too. So the first thing he's going to do is roast some cauliflower. Now, I like to use cauliflower because it can really caramelize it and bring out the flavors. So we're just gonna trim this up really, really quick. I've got some roasted ahead of time. The first thing is that we're gonna cut the cauliflower, take the core out, and always have a container for your scraps. That way it'll help keep your cutting board nice and clean. We're gonna cut these into nice bite-sized chunks that's gonna roast evenly and our oven is gonna be set to 425 degrees and we're gonna give this time to cook. The more time and patience we have with cauliflower, the more uh, roasted flavor you'll get out of it, the more caramelized flavor you'll get and really bring out those natural sugars. So we're gonna use a mixing bowl. And then we're going to put our scraps aside. And now, we're gonna use a curry powder. Curry, the yellow curry's got turmeric in it. Turmeric is a natural anti-inflammatory. The rest of the curry seasoning has a lot of flavor to it. So we're gonna, we're gonna coat it very nicely, very liberally with the curry. We're gonna add black pepper because black pepper helps the turmeric to absorb into our body. So without, without the black pepper, hard for our body to absorb through our, through our stomach and our digestive system. So adding that pinch of black pepper is gonna make it 2,000 times more absorbable by our body. So if you hear people taking turmeric supplements, um, even just taking a peppercorn with that will help it become more absorbable. Then we're gonna add a little bit of avocado oil and that's gonna, that's gonna help coat and transition the heat from the oven to the cauliflower. And we put that on last because we don't wanna create a barrier around the cauliflower, we want that to absorb. So we're gonna put that in our preheated oven and we're gonna let that caramelize. The other ingredients that we're gonna use is some Brussels sprouts. Now, a lot of people think, ew, Brussels sprouts, but they're a nice cabbage. They're great for anti-inflammatory. They're, they're a tremendous cancer fighter. What I like to do with these is to peel the leaves off layer by layer. Now by doing that, they cook a little more evenly and the flavor is a lot less bitter. And, it, and it's gonna give it a nice crisper texture. And then we're gonna caramelize that as well. That'll be a little bit more fun to eat. When you get down to the center, you can just peel that and get to the core of it, okay? So we'll really enhance those flavors. Next, we're gonna add some mushrooms. I like to use, these are the uh, brown cremini mushrooms. And we're gonna cut those into quarters. Okay. Now the stems we could slice because the stems are still enjoyable. So we can still use those and cook with those and then there's no waste. If there's any dirt on the mushrooms, you wanna make sure you wipe them off. I prefer not to wash mushrooms because they're like a sponge. They're gonna absorb all that water, but you can clean off the dirt with, with just a towel. Next, let's move on to our garlic. Now our garlic is gonna have a lot of carbon. And when I peel the garlic, I like to pinch it between my fingers. And then the part that's hard for some people to digest is right in the center of the garlic. And so if you see the green piece growing out of it where it starts to sprout, that's where we can pull that out and set that aside. And it's usually a little bit more gentle on your stomach to digest it. And then when we smash the garlic, we're releasing the carbon inside of it. And over the next few minutes before we cook it, it's really gonna develop these great properties. Some people feel that this is the number one ingredient that'll help fight cancer. It helps reduce inflammation, and a lot of things, especially high carbs, cause inflammation because it absorbs into our body and we don't know how to digest it. So it becomes very difficult for our body to, to process these things, especially when they're loaded with pesticides, chemical fertilizers, and different ingredients like that. Now next, 
we're gonna core the onion and then we're gonna trim the root end off. Now if we take the top end off first, the knife is gonna be cleaner. We take the root end off there and then we remove the dirt. And that way we're not cutting the dirt through the onion. So that's why when you peel the onion, if you just peel the layers off the outside, we're not gonna drag the dirt from the outside of the onion even after you wash it through the center of the onion where the part we're really gonna eat. Now, even when I make a stock, I always peel the paper off the outside. Even the pigs won't eat paper. Here we go, okay. Now, because the onion is in layers, we can dice it very uniformly. We're gonna cut it top to bottom and then we're gonna measure out the size of our dice. And then we're gonna slice the layers so that way the side, the round part, will have an even dice too. Now the trick, so you don't cry, some people say refrigerate the onion, some people say put some, put, wear, wear some goggles, some people will put a slice of bread in their mouth, all those, all those corny tips and tricks. The thing that I find the most is to have a razor sharp knife. That way you're slicing through the cells, it doesn't explode the gas out, and it doesn't squirt into your eyes. So think of it on a cellular level, it's like science class. And we're gonna use up all of our, all of our onion there. We're gonna dice that. We're gonna take our celery, and we're just gonna cut this on a nice bias. Now the leaves of the, of the celery are really nice and enjoyable to eat too. You can usually finish a soup with those so they don't have to go to waste. Set those aside. And then we're gonna cut this on a nice bias. Uh, you can dice it as well, but this is a pretty quick and efficient, see how fast we can move right through it. And we don't spend a whole lot of time on the prep. Okay. So each of these cups is about 16 ounces. This will make about four portions worth of soup. And next, we're gonna move over to the stove. Let's cook. Okay, so next we're gonna walk you through getting these ingredients in the pan and how we're gonna cook them. So first step is we're gonna use some avocado oil and just a few tablespoons. And we've got the pan nice and hot. And you can see how quickly the oil moves through there. So first thing we're gonna do is cook our mushrooms because we want to be able to get those nice and caramelized. So the trick with cooking mushrooms is not to crowd the pan too much with them. We want to lay them flat and we want to be able to brown them. The more we move and shake the pan, the quicker it's going to cool off. And if you can hear it, it's sizzling. Sizzling is a good sign. That means that we've got a nice hot pan. Now, you can use avocado oil, canola oil. Uh, if you don't have any allergies, peanut oil is actually really nice to cook with at home because it doesn't smoke so much, it doesn't stink out your house. But you have to make sure that there's no allergies associated with it. Not too many people have an allergy to avocado oil, um, or you can also use the canola oil too, which is very, which is very bland as well. So we're looking for something with a very neutral flavor to it and a high smoke point. Olive oil is gonna have a very low smoke point. It's got a very pronounced flavor as well. It can really change uh, what's in your dish, and the flavor, flavors of your dish as well. So the last thing that we're gonna add to it is the garlic because the garlic is actually cut so small that it'll actually burn the quickest. So we start to get some color on the mushrooms. We can kind of rotate them around a little bit. And then we're gonna add our Brussels. Because these we also want over high heat. We wanna get a little bit of browning on them. Even if you just wanna eat these straight, if you cook them in a nice hot saute pan with a little bit of salt and you caramelize them, and I recommend putting the salt at the end because salt will draw out the moisture when you draw out the moisture, it's gonna really, uh, it's gonna cool the surface of the vegetable no matter what you're cooking. Mushrooms are full of water, so as they cook, they're really gonna steam, so you wanna have a large 
flat pan with a light layer of mushrooms because if it's a smaller, more narrow pan and the mushrooms are higher, all that steam is gonna cook the mushrooms that are on top. So we're gonna work those Brussels towards the bottom, get them into that oil a little bit, keep our pan on nice and hot, and then we're gonna to start to add our other vegetables, and then we'll allow it to simmer. And once it simmers, we can add our coconut milk and we get all those flavors together. Okay, so let's move this along. Next, we're gonna add our onions. You can hear that baby sizzle. We're gonna work the onions to the bottom of the pan. One of the things to making a good soup is that you really wanna get the vegetables that are inside there small enough to the size of the spoon and to fit in your mouth. That way you have a variety of different ingredients that are on the spoon that you could taste all at once. Sometimes the vegetables are gonna start out a little bigger than they, they'll end up finished cooking. We got our celery in there. Flavors are quite nice. Uh, because our cauliflower is already caramelized, we can add that last. And now we're gonna add our garlic so that doesn't burn. And mix that all together. Okay, now we're gonna season it. And we're gonna season in steps, I won't say layers, because we're gonna add a little bit of salt. And I like to use a pink sea salt. We're gonna add some pepper. We could always add more later, but we can't take it back out. Now we're gonna add our vegetable stock to it. Just enough to cover the vegetables. And then we're gonna let that simmer. And then we're gonna come back and adjust it. Okay, so we've got our soup up to a nice simmer with the vegetable broth. We've got it seasoned with the initial part of salt. Now we're gonna incorporate some fat. I'm gonna use coconut milk. Um, I prefer to use the coconut cream. When you go to the grocery store, you can find it in, in different uh, cans where there's the light, there's a regular, and there's also the, the coconut cream, which I find is a great dairy replacement. It gives you the same richness, the same creaminess, but without, um, without any animal products whatsoever. And it's typically, it's very neutral, it's unsweetened. So it's, um, when you're doing a savory dish, it's very important to get an unsweetened coconut milk as well. It's usually clearly labeled. And we're gonna add that to our dish. And if you let it simmer long enough, it will get nice and thick. So we're gonna let that come back up to a simmer. And you can see how nice and rich it's looking already. So once it comes back up to a simmer, we're gonna taste it. We're gonna see what the flavor is like. We'll adjust it. We could always add more curry to it, but it's gonna absorb that off of the cauliflower that's in there. And then we've got the nice anti-inflammatories with the turmeric that's in the curry, that's also with the Brussels sprouts, onions and garlic. Those are all great anti-inflammatories that are gonna make up for some of the other things in our diet that may inspire a little bit more inflammation than we would like. So we're gonna give this a few minutes. We're gonna let those flavors incorporate. We're gonna evaporate some of the water out of it and that's gonna consolidate the flavors and it's gonna get nice and rich and creamy. So we're nice up, up to a nice little simmer here. We've got our flavors. You can see how they're floating on top. And the delicious seasoning. Now, if you want to get crazy, if you want to get vegan crazy, here's what you do. Now, people think that tofu doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, but it absorbs flavor. So if you got a nice delicious dish here and you want to add some tofu to it, that's going to give it some, some protein. Now, the advantage of using tofu is that it has all nine essential amino acids which makes a complete protein. Some other vegetables are lentils and quinoa, and then the combination of rice and beans also has that. So um, people are wondering where you get the protein from if you're purely plant-based. There's ingredients just like this where you can get a complete protein. It's the same things that we get from animals. They have a complete protein as well. And that means that there's all nine essential amino acids. So our body needs 20 different amino acids consumed every day. 11 of them we can make ourselves. Nine of them, they're essential because they have to be absorbed through food. And so we can get them all in one ingredient, such as like the ones that I listed, where it's tofu, edamame, soybeans, lentils, quinoa, and a combination of rice and beans. So those have all those things that our body needs. So if you consume a little bit of that every day, we're giving our body the nutrients that it needs to build, to grow, to repair muscles, for our heart to beat, for our brains to think, and all those things that are uh, so important for us. Now, to get this nice and thick, 
we're gonna use a combination of cornstarch and water. Cornstarch and water is considered a slurry. It's gluten-free, so we don't have to worry about using things like a roux, which is butter and flour. There's a lot less calories in this, and you'll see how quickly it'll work. So remember, you get a little bit to start, and you won't see its effects until it comes back up to a simmer. And we wanted just a soup consistency, so nice tight bubbles, still creamy looking. And you can see how those bubbles are a little bit deeper, a little bit, a little bit thicker. They move a little bit slower. And we'll give that a chance to incorporate. We'll add a little bit more. And then we want to give that some time to cook through and cook out. You know, those bubbles get nice and fierce. It's just about ready to serve. Now again, these, this recipe is my preferences of flavors. There's other ingredients that you could add. There's things that you could delete, but I recommend all these ingredients because at some point, something has very beneficial factors to it and, and it's some things that our body needs. And the more we eat healthier food, the less we actually have to consume because it's so nutrient dense that we're getting everything that we need to be healthy. Um, and this helps, uh, you know, having an occasional meal like this helps to make up for some of the pizza, some things like pasta and some other things that are higher in carbs. This is very low carb, high protein, intense flavor, and then I'm gonna be live for any kind of questions and answers that you might have after this. Here's our final dish, so if you really wanna impress your friends, we can add a little bit of petite cilantro that'll really complement the flavors of the dish. We've got some edible flowers. And we're gonna sit down, we're gonna enjoy it. and we're gonna talk about it. Mm. That's really good.